All right, guys, back once again on one of the worst nights of all our 49er lives. The on your 49ers reporter. And get the particulars out of the way. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so I can keep you up to date on any and everything 49ers. With that being said, I'm going to give it to you straight, no chaser. Shit, let's get right into it, man. This was a nail-biter. A real nail biter, man. We we, we lose the game twenty seven to twenty four. We should have won the game twenty seven to twenty four. And magically, this kicker that we didn't brought in, Chase McLaughlin, he showed up. He got us to OT. When we put the game on his shoulders, he didn't come through. He just he just he didn't he ain't come through at all. He hooked that ball so far, he almost kicked it out of the damn stadium. So, for I was watching this on Ron Bowl Sports for a little bit. I was just watching his reaction as I'm watching the game. I'm looking in the comments, people saying bye, Robbie, and all this other stuff. Really? You want to say bye to Robbie Gold for a dude to hook the shit out of a ball when he was kicking these damn field goals in practice like it was nothing? I understand when you're in a game, it's different. But he was, I mean, he was knocking these motherfuckers straight down the middle. He was so far to the right that if he just hooked it a little bit, it still would have made it. But he hooked, when that ball left his foot, it was so far left. I didn't think there was any way it was going to be right. This is our first loss of the season, man. And this it was a nail biter, but what, what killed me is is we allowed Seattle's defense to look like they were elite. Offensive line was just we couldn't do nothing, man. We couldn't block on the interior. We couldn't block on the edges. I mean, at this point, I'm to tell you the truth, we should have started damn uh Justin School and Daniel Brown School. McGlinchy couldn't block shit. Staley wasn't even doing very good, man. I understand. Like, don't get me wrong. Everybody has a bad game. But but Davion Clowney was eating us alive. And, I mean, I'm just, this, this is this is ridiculous right now, man. We did the, the offensive line. just could We could not stop them. And we didn't. The number one thing that we failed at was containing Russell Wilson. We did not contain him the way that we needed to. Because when Russell sees the smallest crease in any type of green grass, he'll take off and he'll run. At the end of this game in OT, when when we're not collapsing, we didn't collapse the pocket correctly on him to be able to keep him in it. So he couldn't make those ridiculous magical plays that he makes because he made several of them man we had him stopped and then he backed up and just threw a pat like that's why i was reading an article earlier today and akella witherspoon was saying you have to cover these guys twice with russell wilson you got to cover for 45 minutes like you give him like he had way too long in the pocket to be able to relax and do things and the thing is if you push the pocket one way or another russell's going to get out of there and he's going to make something happen He's that type of QB, and I'm sorry, guys, but if we play like this against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, he's going to destroy us. He is going to destroy us, something fierce, because Lamar Jackson's younger, faster, and way more athletic than Russell Wilson. So if we play like this against him, man, we'd get killed against them. We would lose really bad against the Ravens. Now, don't sit here and take my disdain or, or, or... or my frustration with the loss as me giving up on my team. That's not what I'm doing by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying, I'm pointing out the obvious, man. It's, just, it's my duty as someone who considers himself a person of the media to state the truth, man. We looked bad on offense. And to be honest with you tonight, man, Kendrick Bourne, you just you, you let me down. You scored the TD, you had another big catch, but you keep... The, the receivers are dropping the ball, and it is just evident that this is the reason we can't do anything. We lose Emmanuel Sanders, and next thing you know, the offense just magically goes to shit. Nothing happens. Now, what? Now, honestly, the, the, the big surprise to me was Debo was going off. He did his thing. 
He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He came in, man, and did everything under the sun. So Debo showed up, showed out, and did what he was supposed to do, man. I, I really can't even be mad at him. He did what he was supposed to do. But KB, man, and and uh, KB, and then having um, Dante Pettis drop, you know, I mean, like, this, this, if the ball touches your hands, man, you got to reel in the pass. You make Jimmy look bad. You make everybody look bad. We didn't even break 100 yards rushing. And as a team, they broke 147 against the defense. That's almost 150 yards. We ain't never even barely even allowed that much this year. And we let it happen, man. You know what I'm saying? Chris Carson, 89 yards and touchdown. Russell Wilson had six carries for 53 fucking yards. That's 8.8 .8 yards per carry. And an OT, a 18-yard run to set their kicker up in prime field goal position. And this was too easy. That's how we tried to ice the kicker. That shit wasn't working. That dude, he he had ice in his veins, unfortunately. Uh, so it's a 27 to 24 losses, only by three points. So it wasn't that we did anything wrong. It's just we put Russell Wilson in an overtime situation, and he seems to thrive in that. He went to OT last week with the Bucks, and he pulled off a fucking miracle. So now here we are. In a messed up situation, uh, but we're still a hey, look. We're eight and one. We still have uh, the rest of the season to go. I can't say that we're going to lose anything, and it, it won't even really be a problem, guys. I mean, we just have to play harder. We got to be smarter, and the defense has to continue to work. Um, it, it's a very frustrating loss because we had the W. That's the sad part. We had to win. Chase had to win, and he hooked that ball so bad, man. It's got me stressed out. The whole game was a nail-biter, man. When we went into OT, I was like, shit, we got to win the toss. As soon as we lost the toss, I said, god damn, this is another chance for them to try to go ahead and pull this off. Jimmy was 24-46 for 248 yards, 5.4 yards a throw, one TD and one interception. And toward, the, I mean, it, and there were so many times in the game he looked flustered, but that's because the line couldn't protect. The line couldn't do shit. If you ain't got five seconds to even think about going through your reads, then what's the point in even trying to play? I'm telling you, Jadavion Clowney, that, that defensive line for the Seattle Seahawks literally ate our offensive line alive. And I, I'm, I'm just being honest with you, man. I don't think this would have happened if Brunt School and School would have been in. I really don't. I think that Clowney would have had a couple of things, but I think if we would have just said, fuck it, a shift, you know, Ross Dwelly over there to help with clowning a little bit, we'd have been all right. You know, it, it it was very frustrating because he was in the backfield all night. He scored the damn touchdown on the strip sack, man. Like, this dude is is a monster, man. You know, and he's big, he's tall, he's long, his wingspan is ridiculous. So, I mean, they just, we, we got our play, man. We got our play in every which way you can think of. And it's a frustrating loss, but... We got to take this one on the chin and just keep on pushing. I would have did better with the tie. You leave it to me. I would have felt a whole lot better with the tie. But Debo Samuel, man, eight receptions, 112 yards. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, KB, four for 42 and one touchdown. Uh, but the thing is, he had a really bad – he had he had really, really bad, you know, times where he was just missing the ball, man. He wasn't catching, period. And it's, it's, it's really, really crap, man. We just had a really bad game all together. I thought we was finna do something because at the end of the game, started in overtime, man, Raheem was starting to make some moves. You know, he, he was doing his thing. But we just we didn't pull off the win, guys, and, and this happens. A loss happens. I mean, what kills me is our defense did what they needed to do, man. We The beginning of the game, we were rolling. You know what I'm saying? We had them down 10 nothing. The only reason they scored was because of their defense, so they didn't even really – their offense wasn't even really messing with us like that, you know. But they come into the second half, man, and they, they showed up. They showed up, man. We go into OT. You know, they held us scoreless the second and third quarter. We didn't score, you know, 14 more points till the end. So it was frustrating, you know, because we just – our def our offense became inept. They defense became elite. And I was wondering what the hell was happening, man. And this is what I was saying about Brunskill being a better pass blocker than, than McGlinchey. 
But unless he was getting ate up all night, man, I understand there's rest when you come back. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's a serious point, man. He McGlinchey looked bad. He looked real bad. So did I mean shit. I'm not even gonna lie. Joe looked bad too. Joe looked really bad, man. Davion Clowney was killing him. And I know that we had a heck of a time when we played the Browns and Miles Garrett and Justin School was trying to stop him and you know, but I mean he was doing his thing. I feel like honest, I almost feel honestly to a point that we we basically tried to fix something that wasn't broke. I feel like we could have held McGlinchey and Joe Staley out until we play Arizona or something. Until we play a defense, you know, that's a little bit lesser. But we had a heck of a time with them on Thursday night. We had a hell of a time with the Seahawks defensive line, man. They was on our ass. And it's it showed, man. It showed. The rush showed for Joe and for Mike. You know, the interior of the, uh, the offensive line wasn't playing very well. Hell, we lost uh, Western Richburg for a little bit. Uh, DJ Jones went down. Uh, you know, Emmanuel Sanders went down. We lost. We started losing people, like, left and right, man. You know, and then toward the end of the game, what, what killed me is the defense showed up, man. I'm sorry. You know, they, they did what the fuck they could, man. Defense did what they could. This this loss is honestly on the offense. It's on the offense. It's on Jimmy and it's on Kyle, man. Period, point blank. It's on them, and it's really frustrating because they, they, they couldn't pull it off. Jimmy got flustered because the line couldn't block. So he was scared. Every time he was about to throw the ball, he was like, shit, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because I don't even have time to be able to go through my reads properly, you know? And then the defense, they, man, look, dude, the defense did what the hell they were supposed to do. You know, I mean, you can't force fumbles and get interceptions and do all the things that you need to do, and then your offense don't do nothing with it. We, we didn't even score. Hell, in the overtime, when we got the ball back and we had a chance to even do we only ran 25 seconds off the clock before that, that game-winning drive for the Seattle Seahawks. That was horribly inept. If anything, run the ball. Let the clock start running. But you too busy trying to put the hands in the ball of Jimmy G, put the ball in the hands of Jimmy G, and look what happened. It, it just it was, it was not something he could do, man. That pass to Debo... Had Jimmy put the ball where it needed to be, that's a touchdown. He didn't have enough on it, man. He floated that, and that allowed Griffin to come over and make the play. That's how he wound up doing that, man. That's just straight up. So, it's a loss. We 8-1. and one. We are no longer undefeated, but that does not by any stretch of the imagination mean that we about to go out and have a two-game losing streak and lose the damn Cardinals again. The faithful were there. They were rocking. We did everything that we could tonight, guys. And we came out and we played as hard as we could. We didn't get the W, but, I mean, hey, you win some, you lose some, but you live to fight another day. We're 8-1. and one. We're still the class of the fucking NFL. Don't let nobody tell you different. And I guarantee you right now, you know what's going to happen? Everybody's going to come in and be like, oh, the 49ers aren't for real. The 49ers suck. They can't do this. They can't do that. See what happens when they go up against this. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to be a situation where you know what they're about to do. They're about to. They're gonna put us in the mud. They're gonna say that we suck. We ain't played nobody. We're horrible. We don't know what we can do, and all kinds of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But we sacked Russell Wilson five times this night. We forced several fumbles. We did what we could do, but the defense can't. The defense can't keep winning the game for us, man. The defense did everything that they could. This is on the offense. It's on the offense in every way, shape, and form, and it's on that offensive line. That's how this loss came about tonight. 27 to 24. First quarter we scored 10. Second quarter we scored nothing. Third score, third quarter we scored nothing. Fourth quarter we scored 14. OT we lose. It's that simple, guys. But like I said, to me, I mean, Drake Greenlaw did his best Quan Alexander impression. He had that pick, man, and he did what he did. He put us in prime field position. That's the biggest issue. He put us in position to win. He went. He ran all those yards back. He looked slow as a damn turtle, but he did it. He did his best Quan Alexander impression. The defense gave us every opportunity to put this game away. Our offense could not get it done. Our line was not holding up against that defensive line that they had. They ate us up. That just tells us that we got to get way better. 
And we got to be stronger. And I can tell you right now, Joe is a pro bowler, man. Joe, Joe's a, a, a consummate professional. So you won't see Joe losing his job. But I can tell you right now, I'm not going to lie to you. I think Kyle probably thinking to himself, you know, Mike, I don't know, man. You might have to show me something to practice. Because if you don't want to, you want to play like that, we're going to put Daniel in. Daniel seemed to do very well in pass protection. So, you know, I mean, I'm here I am getting notifications on my damn phone about how McLaughlin just shanked. <laughs> he shanked the shit out of the damn field goal. So it's, it's not making my night any better, man. It really isn't. But a loss is a loss. It is what it is. It ain't what it ain't. It's going to be what it's going to be. Um... Next game up, we got the cards, man. We got the cards, and we're still at home, so we don't have to go anywhere. Um, we'll have to sleep on this loss, guys, and get ready for the card. We got to wake up and just this is water off the duck's back. We have to let it go tomorrow and move on and start looking forward toward the uh, Arizona Cardinals. But, uh, hey, man, this is Deion, your 49er reporter. I'm signing off for the night. I want to say good night. Uh, still not a gang. We still not a faithful. We still 81, and we still atop the NFC West, and we're still atop the NFC in general. So I can tell you right now, yes, we'll drop in the power rankings and all this other stuff, and you'll see teams go, oh, look what the 49ers offense can't do and all this other shit, but we still, we're still the best. Bottom line, our defense showed up. Our offense did not. That's how you can lose a game. You know, the defense gave us too many opportunities to win this game, and we didn't pull it off. Um, defensive line did what they could, but there were times where they broke down because they were too busy trying to get to Russell Wilson. But when you have a lucid quarterback like that and you wind up cl collapsing the pocket the wrong way, he'll get out of there and he'll run and he'll make plays. And or if you collapse the pocket too far to one side, he, he will do what he needs to do. Like Russell had several different times where he got away and he did things that he needed to do. Now, I like that rush with DJ Jones, man. DJ just bull rushed the shit out of the nation and went right into rest. But either way, man, it's on to the Cardinals. That's all we can do. You know what I'm saying? Um, we still did what we could. Devo Samuel had his coming out party. He looked great. I hope that continues, and I just hope that everything with Emmanuel Sanders is good and nothing's wrong with him. Um, hopefully he's doing all right, man, because if he gets injured and this is the way the offense looks without him, we're going to be shit out of luck, man. But Kyle will go ahead and fix it. He'll take a look at things. He'll see what we did. He'll take a look at the tape. You know, I'm pretty sure he's going to, you know, chew the offensive line out, and we got it, man. On to the Cardinals, baby. It's a loss, but it was a loss that was bound to happen at some point. Um, glad that it was a fighting loss, though. I will say that, you know, in leaving this. I'm glad that it was a fighting loss, and the reason I say that is because we didn't go down like chumps. We didn't just get beat out bad. Like, we fought tooth and nail to the end, and we just couldn't pull off the win. We had the win in our hands, and this quarter, this, this kicker off the street, Taysom McLaughlin, there's a reason, obviously, why Chargers cut him. Because he shaked the shit out of that football. That that was a W that just went to the left like that. And it became a loss. Either way, man, like I said, stay down there faithful. Stay blessed. Y'all have a good evening. I'm Deion, your 49ers reporter, signing off. Peace and blessings.